If the priest is to consecrate a ciborium during Mass, the ciborium should be placed on the altar before Mass a little to the side of the cross or tabernacle. The ciborium should be covered with a lid. If the ciborium will be reposed in the tabernacle after communion, a veil should also be placed on the altar before Mass so that the priest can veil the ciborium before he places it in the tabernacle. After the priest ascends the altar and lays out the corporal, he sets the chalice in the center and then places the ciborium next to the chalice. It remains there until the offertory. When it comes time for the offering of the host, the priest sets the ciborium to the side, uncovers the chalice, and then sets the chalice to the right of the corporal. Before taking the patent with the host, he first sets the ciborium on the corporal and uncovers it, placing the lid off the corporal. He then takes the patent and offers the host, saying the prayer, Sushipe Sancte Pater. After placing the host on the corporal, he then covers the ciborium. Whenever the priest covers or uncovers the ciborium, his left hand should steady the base while the right hand takes the lid. It is very important that the priest make sure that everything he intends to consecrate is on the corporal before the consecration. When it comes time for the consecration, the priest uncovers the ciborium immediately before he begins the prayer qui pridie. He sets the lid off the corporal, wipes his fingers, and then consecrates the hosts. After elevating the host, he genuflects, covers the ciborium, and then uncovers the chalice in the same movement. The remainder of the Mass proceeds as usual until the Communion. Please refer to the next chapter on the distribution of Holy Communion for the instructions on how to handle the ciborium during Communion. When Holy Communion has been distributed during Mass, the priest may be left with one or more ciboria he must purify during the ablutions. The rubrics direct that a ciborium must be purified before it is taken back to the sacristy. They do not, however, specify the precise manner of the purification. What follows is a recommended custom. The priest first uncovers the chalice and does a dry purification of the ciborium by taking it in his left hand and tilting it over the chalice. With the right hand, he draws out any particles with his thumb and forefinger and sends them into the chalice. He repeats this for each ciborium which needs to be purified. He then sets the ciborium on the corporal, takes it with the right hand, and holds it at the edge of the corporal. The server pours the first ablution of wine into the ciborium while the priest says the prayer, Quod ore sumsimus. The priest carefully rotates the ablution in the ciborium to pick up any additional fragments adhering to the side. If there are multiple ciboria, he pours the contents from the first ciborium into the second, and then the second into the third, and so forth. He then pours the contents into the chalice. The priest rotates the ablution in the chalice to pick up any drops of the precious blood and then consumes the first ablution, making sure to hold the paten, not the purificator, under his chin. He sets the chalice down and then takes the ciborium with both hands to receive the second ablution at the epistle corner as usual, saying the prayer, Corpus Tuum Domini Quod Sumsi. Usually, the ciborium will require the server to pour in a larger amount of water than usual. The priest dries his fingers with the purificator and returns to the center, keeping the purificator in the left hand and rotating the ablution in the ciborium to pick up any remaining fragments. He pours the ablution from the ciborium to the chalice as before.
He then consumes the second ablution from the chalice as usual, holding the purificator under his chin. Each of the vessels must be dried with the purificator. He sets the saboria to the side and rebuilds the chalice as usual. After the Leonine prayers, the priest takes the chalice and carries it with him into the sacristy. The saboria are removed after Mass. In Masses when the priest will be distributing Holy Communion to the faithful, a separate server's patent should be placed on the credence table before Mass, which the server will take at Communion time and hold under the chin of each communicant. The priest will usually consecrate a ciborium during Mass, although if there are only a small number which will communicate, he may use hosts reserved in the tabernacle. If he will need to open the tabernacle before or after communion, he should make sure the tabernacle key is on the altar before Mass or carry it with him to the altar. When it comes time for communion, after the priest has received the precious blood, he sets the chalice down and covers it with the pall. The server rises and goes to get the server's patent from the credence table. The priest uncovers the ciborium with the right hand and lays the lid on the corporal, making sure that it is face up so that any particles which might be adhering to the inside of the lid do not fall onto the corporal. He genuflects, picks up the ciborium with the left hand, takes out a host with the right, and turns around to face the people. He holds the ciborium at the level of his breast and elevates the host a few inches directly above the ciborium. He then says in the loud voice, Ecce agnus te, ecce quitorit peccata mundi. Domine non sum dinius ut intra sub tectum meum, sed tantum de quervot snabitur anima meum. Domine non sum dinius ut intra sub tectum meum, sed tantum de quervot snabitur anima meum. Domine non sum dinius ut intra sub tectum meum, sed tantum de quervot snabitur anima meum. He says the entire prayer in the loud voice three times. The people may join in if it is the custom. He first gives communion to the server, who kneels on the footpace holding the patent under his chin. The priest makes the sign of the cross over the communicant with the host, making sure to keep the host directly above and within the bounds of the ciborium. As he makes the sign of the cross, he says the communion formula, Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuum in vitam eternam. Amen. Bowing his head at the holy name and laying the host on the tongue of the communicant as he says Amen. Note that it is the priest who says Amen. The communicant remains silent. After giving communion to the server, the priest then goes to the communion rail and gives communion to the faithful beginning at the epistle side and proceeding to the gospel side. The server stands to the right of the priest and holds the paten under the chin of each communicant. The priest must recite the full communion formula for each communicant and bless them with the host. Each communicant should kneel at the rail hold his head up straight, close his eyes, and open his mouth with the tongue laid against the lower lip. If there are several rows of communicants, he goes back to the epistle side before beginning the next row. Communion is always distributed from the epistle side to the gospel side and never the reverse. If the priest begins to run out of hosts and must break some of them in half in order to finish, he should return to the altar, break them with both hands over the ciborium, and then continue. The priest may leave the sanctuary if necessary, but is not allowed to leave the church or go beyond eyesight of the altar. 
When the priest has finished distributing Holy Communion, he takes the paten from the server in his right hand and returns to the altar. He sets the ciborium on the corporal. If there are still hosts in the ciborium or if the tabernacle door is open, he genuflects. If the ciborium is to be reposed in the tabernacle, he first covers it with the lid, then the veil, and then reposes it in the tabernacle. If the door is closed, he opens it, but does not genuflect. He reposes the ciborium, genuflex, then closes and locks the door to the tabernacle. He then purifies the server's patent into the chalice and sets it to the epistle side off the corporal. He then proceeds with the ablutions as usual. If the priest did not consecrate a ciborium during Mass and plans to distribute communion using hosts reserved in the tabernacle, after he has consumed the precious blood, he sets the chalice on the corporal and covers it. He then unlocks and opens the tabernacle door, genuflex, and retrieves the ciborium. He closes the tabernacle, but does not lock it, or he may leave it open partway, but veiled. He sets the ciborium on the corporal, unveils it, setting the veil outside the corporal, and then uncovers the ciborium, keeping the lid face up on the corporal. He then takes a host and turns around to say the Ecce Agnus Dei, Ecce Agnus Dei, Ecce Quitoris Peccatum, and distributes communion as usual. When two feast days overlap on the calendar, there occurs what is called a commemoration. The prayers proper to the feast which is impeded are not said except for the collect, the secret, and the post-communion prayers, which are instead commemorated. The liturgical ordo will tell you which feast is the principal one and which is to be commemorated. The way a commemoration works is as follows. Prior to Mass, an additional ribbon in the Missal should be set to the place where the prayers of the impeded feast will be commemorated. When it comes time for the Collect, the priest says the Collect of the principal feast as usual. Deus qui nos hodierne die exaltationis sancti crucis annua sodemnitate litificas, preste que sumus ut cuius mysterium in terra coniovimus, eus redemptionis premie in cero meriamur, periundum dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum. But after he finishes the conclusion for the principal collect, he then turns to the collect of the feast which was impeded. He makes a low head bow and says, and then says the commemorated collect along with its conclusion. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tuum, qui tecum vivere regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. He then turns back to the principal feast of the day and continues. Lexio Piste Beati Pauli Apostoli ad Filippenses. Fratres, hoc enum sentite in vobis. Orate, fratres. When it comes time for the secret at the end of the offertory, the priest says the secret of the principal feast as usual in the quiet voice. 
But when he says the conclusion, he says the entire formula for the conclusion in the quiet voice, including the per omnia secula seculorum, amen. He then turns the page to the secret for the impeded feast, which is to be commemorated. He does not say oremus, but simply reads the prayer in the quiet voice, along with its conclusion, stopping at the word Deus, and then turning the page to the preface and continuing as usual in the loud voice. Amen. Et cum spiritu tuo. The last prayer which is commemorated is the post-communion. The commemoration for the post-communion works in exactly the same manner as for the collect. The priest says the post-communion for the principal feast, along with its conclusion, turns the page to the commemoration, says Oremus, and then says the commemorated post-communion, along with its conclusion. After he finishes the commemoration, he closes the Missal. The procedure for one commemoration is therefore as follows. For the collect and post-communion, there is the oremus for the principal feast, followed by the prayer and then the conclusion. Then a second oremus, followed by the commemoration, and then its conclusion. For the secret, there is no oremus, but simply the secret for the principal feast. The full conclusion, including the peromnia secula seculorum amen, and then the commemoration. Then the conclusion for the commemoration, up to the word Deus. The page is then turned to the preface, and the peromnia secula seculorum is said in the loud tone. It sometimes happens that there are two feasts which are impeded, in which case there will be two commemorations at the collect, secret, and post-communion. This is the maximum number of commemorations that are allowed. When there are two commemorations, the procedure is as follows. At the collect and the post-communion, the priest says the oremus, and then the collect or post-communion for the principal feast of the day, followed by its conclusion. He then turns the page to the first commemoration and says Oremus, followed by the commemorated prayer. Oremus. Suscipiamus Domini Misericordiam Tuum in Medio Templi Tui, Reparationis Nostri Ventura Solemnia Congris, Honoribus Precedamus. But he skips the conclusion and turns the page immediately to the second commemoration. He then says the second commemoration, followed by its conclusion. When there are two commemorations at the secret, the priest first says the secret of the principal feast of the day, along with its full conclusion, including the per omnia secula seculorum, in the quiet voice. Then he turns the page to the first commemoration and says the commemorated prayer in the quiet voice, but he skips the conclusion and turns immediately to the second commemoration. He says the second commemoration in the quiet voice, including the conclusion up to the word Deus. Then turns the page to the preface, and continues as usual in the loud voice. Amen.
Not every Mass in the extraordinary form contains a Gloria and a Creed. The Gloria is usually said on all feasts of the first, second, and third class, except when the priest is wearing violet. The Creed will always be said on Sundays and first class feasts, as well as most second class feasts. Check the liturgical ordo to see if the Mass you are saying requires a Gloria or a Creed. If no glory is to be said, the priest says the Kyrie with the server as usual. After the last Kyrie, the priest immediately kisses the altar, turns around and says, He then goes straight to the Missal to say the Collect. If there is no creed, Last the priest the finishes the gospel as usual, kissing the book and saying, Per Evangelica Dicta, Deliantur Nostra Delicta. He moves the missal and stand to the center, kisses the altar, turns around and says, Dominus Sobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo. And then begins the prayers of the Amen. offertory as usual, with the offertory antiphon. When the priest gives a sermon or homily, it customarily comes immediately following the gospel. The priest finishes the gospel, moves the missal and stand to center, removes his maniple, and lays it over the missal. He then bows to the cross and descends to the foot. At the foot of the altar, he will either bow or genuflect, depending on whether the Blessed Sacrament is present. He then goes to the pulpit to preach. It is customary, although not required, to repeat the Epistle and Gospel in the vernacular at this time. All stand for the Gospel, but there are no liturgical responses or signs of the cross. At this point, it is also customary for the priest to make the announcements regarding parish events or the bulletin. The priest then begins the sermon. He may do so with or without the sign of the cross, and it is fitting that the sermon be on the gospel of the day. When he finishes preaching, he descends the pulpit and returns to the foot of the altar. He bows or genuflects with the server and then ascends. He resumes the maniple and then immediately begins the creed. Credo in unum Deum, Patrum omnipotentem, Factorum Or, if there is not to be a creed, he immediately begins the offertory. Dominus Fabiscum, et cum spiritu tuo. Oremus. When a priest has no one to serve his Mass, he may still say Mass privately but he must also perform all the parts of the Mass which are normally done by the server. There are a few differences which should be noted. Prior to Mass, the cruets and lavabo dish and towel should be placed on or near the epistle side of the altar within easy reach of the priest. It is most convenient if a little water be poured into the lavabo dish beforehand. When he initially reverences the altar, he may set his beretta on the step. At the prayers at the foot of the altar, he recites the confitior only once, omitting the words et vobis fratres and et vos fratres. Confitio Deo omnipotenti, beata Maria semper virgini, beata Michele Arcangelo, beata Ioni Baptiste, sanctis apostolis petuit paro, et omnibus sanctis, qui peccavi nimis cogitatione verbo et opere, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, Idio preco beatum Mariam semper virginem beatum Michaela macangelum beatum Johannem baptistam sanctus apostolos petrum et paulum et omnes sanctus orari pro mea dominum deum nostrum He says the miseriatur using the words nostri and nos instead of vestri and vos Miseriatur nostri omnipotens Deus de misis peccatis nostris peducat nos ad vitam eternam amen 
The priest makes all the responses during Mass just as the server would, including the Dominus Vobiscum and Et Cum Spiritu Tuo. Dominus Vobiscum, Et Cum Spiritu Tuo. Oremus. Before the Gospel, he must transfer the Missal himself. After he finishes the Alleluia tract or sequence, he transfers the Missal to the Gospel side, bowing his head to the cross as he passes center. He then returns to the middle to say the Munda Cor Meum. At the offertory, he infuses the water and wine into the chalice by picking up the cruets himself. At the lavabo, he simply dips his fingers into the lavabo dish and then dries them on the towel. After saying the Orate Fratres, he makes the response Sushipiat, but uses the words Manibus Meis instead of Tuis. Sushipiat Dominus Sacrificium de Manibus Meis, ad Larme Quorum Domine Sui, ad Utilitatum Cope Nostrum Totius Quicli Esie Sui Sancti. Amen. After he has received communion, he must set the chalice on the corporal and then take the wine cruet and pour in the first ablution himself. At the second ablution, he goes to the epistle corner and pours wine and water over the fingers of his left hand only. He then dips the fingers of his right hand into the chalice to purify them. He dries his fingers as usual with the purificator. When he rebuilds the chalice, he may take the chalice veil directly from the epistle side and then transfer the missal when he is finished. He bows his head to the cross as he passes center with the missal. Even though no one is present, he still gives the final blessing, since this blessing is not merely for the benefit of those who come to Mass, but for all the members of the Church Militant and Suffering. The rest of the Mass concludes as usual.